Well, good morning, church. It is so good to be back bringing the word of God for all of us today. And today we're going to be continuing on on our One Thing series that Pastor Josh、uh, kickstarted last week.、Uh, what's this One Thing series? It's basically, you know, things that are really, really crucial, absolutely vital for us to have in place, priorities in our lives if we are serious about following Jesus. And so today, our One Thing. Comes from a passage、uh, in the New Testament. It's a very short account. It's a very familiar passage, but it's packed with punch, and it really gives us a glimpse into the life of Jesus and the two sisters who hosted him for dinner. So why don't we read this together? It's found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter ten,、uh, verses forty to forty-two. But for a bit of context, we're going to go to thirty-eight to forty-two. So why don't you read along with me this morning? The words will come up on your screen. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, "Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me." But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. You know there is something that is so real about this story because I think we've all been in some version of this situation.、Uh, at times, we have probably felt like Martha. You know, stress. Frazzled, stuck in that high tension place where it feels like we have to do all the work、uh, all by ourselves, while other people who are supposed to be helping aren't. At times, we've probably felt like Mary and like Jesus. You know, times where you are happily minding your own business, and somebody has a big burst of tension, they lose it completely, and then they take it out on you. But it's Jesus' response that always, always convicts me. He says this, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Now, before we jump into things this morning, I think we need to set some right perspectives from the begin from the start. And so, firstly,、um, you know, I think we need to understand that this passage—it's not about people who are doers or workaholics、uh, versus those who are contemplative and rested. It's not about who is a Martha and who is a Mary and who's the better of the two. We need to be clear about the fact that what Martha was doing was not wrong.、Uh, it was a beautiful, wonderful thing because you know she was showing Jesus and his followers hospitality. She wanted to bless them. She wanted to take care of them. She wanted to feed them.、Uh, and her invitation and her hospitality—they were her way of expressing honor for Jesus. The second thing that we need to understand is that the main issue or the main problem in this passage was not Martha's frustration with her sister or the way that she spoke to Jesus. Yes, they were both problems, but they were not the main problem, because when Jesus corrected Martha, it was not a rebuke of godly hospitality as much as it was a reminder of godly priorities. So. What was the one thing that Jesus was talking about? Verse thirty-nine tells us what Mary was doing. She was sitting at the feet of Jesus, and she was listening to his teaching. And I know right off the bat, some of us are thinking, "Hey, that's two things." So, what is the one thing? Is it just sitting, or is it listening? Or is it two in one? This week, as I was preparing for this message, you know, I was really challenged to rethink this passage. And I, I want to invite you on that journey with me. I want you to imagine with me for a moment 
if the complaint was reversed and it was Mary who was agitated, it was Mary who was distracted, it was Mary who was distressed. Imagine if she was the one who complained and said to Jesus, Lord, do you not care that my sister is wasting time just being busy? Tell her then to come and sit at your feet and listen to you. What might Jesus have said? He might have said this. He might have said, Mary, Mary, you are anxious and distracted that your sister is not with you. Martha has chosen the good portion, even as she is working. And I know that some of us hearing that today, we might feel a little bit uncomfortable. It's challenging to think about it in that way. But I do think that Jesus would say that. Why is that so? Because time after time throughout the Gospels, in the many accounts that people had with Jesus, we see that Jesus is not just about behavior modification. You know, instead he is all about heart transformation that leads to change. In other words, Jesus is saying that the one thing, the good portion is a matter of the heart rather than a matter of sitting versus serving. So the one thing is really a posture of our heart and it's a posture of always listening. In other words, our listening cannot depend on our physical sitting or stillness. We must move from being people who listen only when we can find stillness and instead cultivate the wonderful habit of spiritual sitting and listening to God always all throughout the day, throughout every moment, so that every word, so much so, so that every word that we speak, every thought that we think, and every decision that we make comes so naturally out of listening to God, whether we are sitting or not. You know, listening is so much more and so much richer than just sitting in stillness and listening. Uh, it starts with the posture of our heart getting that right. It's, it's about being able to sit spiritually, to be submitted, to be yielded, to be rested in our hearts so that we can listen. And listening includes, you know, communing with God as we live, as we move throughout the day. Abiding and adoring God, just like what Pastor Josh preached last week, that is also part of listening. And the joy of knowing God's pleasure and approval on our work as we serve Him is also part of listening. Now today, we don't have the privilege of sitting and listening at the literal feet of Jesus. One day, we will. One day when we go to be with the Lord, we will be able to do that. But what we have today is His Word and the Holy Spirit. The first way that we cultivate a habit, a practice, and a priority of listening to God is through His Word. Now, the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we cannot claim to hear or listen to Jesus without getting God's word and getting his word in us. Many of us, I know we've tried to get into God's word, uh, but at some point along the way, we lose motivation. And uh, for some of you who've been on the read through the Bible in a year journey with me before, you know how it feels. You start off great in Genesis, you hang on through to Exodus, you make it to Leviticus, but by the time you come to Numbers, you get lost and you potentially end up dying there. Uh, maybe you feel that you didn't get much out of the Exodus, size and it took too much time out of your daily schedule and you gave up. But friend, I want to encourage us all today, if we want to hear God, if we want to listen and hear him speak to us in spite of what other noises may be around us, we need to know his word. We need to have his word in us. And that's the first way that we listen to God through his word. 
The second way that we listen to God is through communing with the Holy Spirit. Now to commune with the Holy Spirit, it means to get to know him intimately. It's all about relationship. And what kind of relationship is it? It's a love relationship. It's not a relationship out of duty or out of obligation, but it is about love. And this is such an important relationship because as followers of Jesus, you and I, we are under a new covenant of grace. And under this new covenant, we need to believe in Jesus and in his finished work on the cross. And the Holy Spirit helps us to do that. Now, in order to experience the power of the Holy Spirit, we need to cultivate a relationship with him through prayer, through talking to him. And just like what Pastor Josh said last week, it's something that's going to take time. It's going to take trust. There are two things that Jesus said about the good portion. The first thing that he says about the good portion is that it is necessary. Listening to him is necessary. And why is this so? Well, listening is necessary because it provides us with the wisdom of God for all of life's decisions and directions. You know, God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness in his word. It is his word that gives us the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith in Christ Jesus and all scripture all of scripture. It is inspired by God. It is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. So that why? So that we may be adequate. We may be equipped for every good work. Even Jesus, you know, we remember in, uh, in earlier on in the book of Luke in chapter four, he overcame Satan's temptation by quoting from scripture that he knew by heart. Go back to the book of Psalms, you know, the psalmist proclaimed, your word I have treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. You see, God's word gives us the knowledge about how to love God and how to love one another. Today, so many believers are defeated by sin and find themselves in strained relationships, but they seldom get into the Bible to search for answers. You see, not only does God's word give us the wisdom that leads to salvation and the understanding that we need to grow in godliness, it gives us the perspectives that we need to face life's trials, including death. You see, the word of God is what promises us hope in the midst of trials and hope beyond the grave. This year, if we truly want to listen to God, we must come back to the word of God. Listening is necessary because it connects us to the living God of heaven and earth. You see, Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to his teaching implies a communion or a fellowship of her spirit with the Lord's. It's through her time communing with the Lord at his feet that Mary developed this sensitivity that enabled her to anoint Jesus for his burial, an action that Jesus said would be remembered wherever the gospel was preached in the whole world. You see, we need to remember that the point of spending time with God through his word in communing and in prayer with him is not so we can tick off some box on our goals chart. The point is to meet with with the Lord. It is to commune with him as Mary did, as we do sitting at his feet, listening to his word. Listening is necessary because it helps us look at the pressures of life with proper perspective. You know, Martha, she was stressed out by uh, all the pressures of preparing the meal for her honored guests. In fact, she had probably been thinking about it for days since she heard that Jesus was coming. She would have wanted everything to be perfect for the occasion, but she was so focused on these pressures that she ends up uh, frazzled and, and bothered and even blurts out an accusation against her Lord and her sister, which actually, you know, violates the two great commandments. If she had taken the time to listen to Jesus, all of these pressures would have fallen into proper perspective. 
And so this applies to us. You know, it's so easy to allow the pressures of life to crowd in on us and to get our focus in the wrong place. You know, we can even think, you know, oh, if I take 30 minutes to spend with the Lord, I will have 30 minutes less for all these other important things that need to be done. Friend, I want to encourage us today that time spent in the word, time spent in communing with God time spent in prayer, all of these, you know, they lift the burden and gives us the Lord's calm, clear perspective, even though our circumstances have not changed. I'm reminded of Isaiah 40, 31. It says, those who wait upon the Lord shall, not might, but shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And the thing about eagles is really their ability to soar above storms waiting upon the Lord, communing with Him through His Word and through the Holy Spirit is what enables us to rise, to soar above whatever it is that we are going through. So friend, today, take heed to what Jesus said. Listening is necessary. The second thing that Jesus says about the good portion is that it is a choice. Intentional and intently listening is not going to happen naturally, at least not in the beginning. And even after years of learning and growing and listening to God, sometimes it can still be very, very challenging. Now, why is listening a choice that we have to make? Well, firstly, listening is a choice that we have to make because life is filled with many urgent demands that we have to meet. You see, Martha, she was distracted. She was anxious. She was troubled with all that she was doing. There were urgent demands because the guests were there. And, you know, we don't know if the 12 uh, were with Jesus, but if they were, then it was a huge dinner production. Uh, even if they were not there, it was still a lot to do. And and it was urgent. You know, in our modern world, uh, with all its supposedly time-saving devices, um, has not really eased the problem of time pressure. We all feel it. We all face deadlines, whether it's preparing uh, the evening meal or whether it's preparing a report for school or preparing for some kind of uh, important event at work. Many urgent things are good courses and even necessary, but very often they are not important in the sense of really making a difference in our lives in the long haul. The second reason why listening is a choice that we have to make is because we have to choose to listen over the noise of our worries and our cares. You see, we are easily distracted by worries and cares, and this affects some people more than others. Uh, it tends to be amplified, especially when we're not listening to the right things that help give us the right perspectives in life. We said it earlier, but what Martha was doing was not a bad thing. It's really it was her allowing it to cause her to have worry, to bother her, to distract her. That was the issue. It is so easy to let the good crowd out the best. You know, this reminds me of uh, quite a famous illustration and it's, it's, it's told about this time management expert who was speaking to a group of business students. And what this expert did is he pulls out a, a big jar with a wide mouth. He puts it on the table in front of him and he takes about a dozen fist sized rocks and he begins to carefully place them one at a time into the glass jar. When no more rocks could fit in, he asks the class, is this jar full? And everyone answered, yes. Ah, says the expert, he reaches under the table and pulls out a bucket of gravel. And then he pours some into the jar. He shakes the jar so that the gravel works its way uh, in between those larger rocks. Then he asks the class again, is the jar full? By this time, the class was onto him. So they replied, probably not. Good, said the expert. 
He reaches under the table again, and this time he brings out a bucket of sand. He dumps the sand into uh, the jar, and it went into all the spaces in between the rocks and the gravel. And once more, he asks the students, is the jar full? This time, they all shout, no. Good, says the expert. He then grabs a pitcher of water, and he pours it into the jar until it was full to the brim. And he asks the class, what was the point of the illustration? And one very smart student said, the point is, no matter how full your schedule is, if you try really, really hard, you can always fit more things into it. No, the expert replied, that's not the point. The point is this. The point is, if you do not put the big rocks in first, you will never get them in at all. And listening to our Lord through his word and through prayer is like those big rocks. If we are not careful, busyness will crowd out that essential space with the Lord. And even good things like serving the Lord can wrongly crowd out the necessary thing. And if we don't put in the big rocks, the priorities, the one things in first, we will never get them in at all. And so the question today is, you're probably asking, well, where do I start? Well, I thought that I would share a little bit about my own journey of growing in the whole area of listening to and communing with God. You know, I want to say from the outset that I'm not great at it and I'm not perfect at it. I am still on a journey and I know it is a long one ahead, but I have come some way from where I used to be. And I would say that I first really started uh, wanting to grow in this area back when I was still in university, which is, you know, a good 15, 16 years ago. And it all started with a desire to hear God for every part of my life. Uh, why, why did I have this desire? Because I understood that God has a purpose for my life. His word tells us so, right? So I understood that and I came to this place in my heart, in my spirit, where all that I really wanted was just to live my life according to his will and his purpose and to accomplish that. Because to my mind, you know, what else is there to live for if not to live for what God has called you to do? And in order to live in that way, I had to know, I had to hear him and I had to learn to listen. Well, I very quickly learned that simply longing or desiring for something is not enough and I had to take more action than that. I had to learn to recognize when God was speaking to me and I needed to be able to recognize the voice of my great shepherd uh, and to be able to distinguish it above all other voices. And in order to know when God was speaking to me and if it was God speaking to me, you know, I knew I first had to know his word. And so I began to read the word of God and I just began to immerse myself in it. And really, it's all about little steps of consistency that build up over time. The more I got into God's word, the more I loved it, the more I enjoyed it. And I really, really began to grow in sensitivity to God's voice. And I began to really recognize his prompting, his leading, and even his gentle rebuking when I sinned, you know, I would recognize him calling me back to draw near. And there's this real sense of closeness, of intimacy. And when that is multiplied over 10 years, when it's multiplied over 15 years and more, you get, eventually you'll get yourself to his place, you know, where you hear God leading and speaking and encouraging you in the midst of whatever challenges, pressures, stress that you might face. It might seem so noisy, it might seem that, you know, you can't make head and tail of it, but when you've put in, you know, those little blocks of consistency, you will hear God in spite of whatever else you are hearing. I will say this, I had a few things that were working in my favor. I was well planted in a church community uh, and it, you know, it was a family of flawed but faithful people uh, who encouraged me on this journey, uh, who wanted me to grow in my faith, who would pray with me, who helped me navigate difficult questions, both theological and life questions. I also had mentors, you know, people I could look up to, people I could learn from. I had examples of what 
a life that listens to God looks like. Now, they were not perfect, but they were real. And they were willing to spend time walking with me through my own journey. And, and the main thing is really that they always always pointed me back to Jesus and pointed me back to his word. You know, I also had people that I was accountable to, and these are friends or peers, and who would always make a point of asking me, you know, so tell me, Rachel, what has God been saying to you lately? What are some areas that he's asking you to grow in or to surrender to him? And these are questions that really I could only answer if I had been listening. I want to share a few more practical uh, pointers that I think will help uh, some of us today. But the first thing is, you know, don't compare your listening to somebody else's. Uh, don't compare how God is speaking to someone else and feel like because you're not hearing him the same way or you're not hearing him with such clarity and detail that he's favoring uh, that person more than you. Instead, I want to encourage you today, focus on Jesus and you. It's okay to be inspired by other people's listening journey and it should encourage us. It should spur us to desire the same. But you have to recognize that again, this is something that will take both trust and time. So I want to encourage us today, commit to the journey because nothing bad can come out of immersing yourself in God's word and letting him speak to you through his word and through his spirit as he brings about revelation, understanding, even plans and strategies about what he is calling you to. Here's the second thing I want to say. Uh, don't blame other people for your inability to hear or listen to God. It's always easy to put the blame on someone or something else. As a student, it was easy to blame studies and exams and assignments whenever I couldn't hear God speaking to me. Now, as an adult, it's easy to blame work or stress or family or all sorts of issues for a lack of time and space to commune with God through his word and through his spirit. I have learned that as long as we are not taking ownership over the priority of listening to God, we will always point the finger at something or someone else. Sometimes we just need to put our pride aside. We just need to stop the blame game and just come before the Lord, approach his word, speak to him and be ready to receive from him. Here's the third thing I want to say. Start simply and realistically and work up from there. Some of the simplest ways that we can start to learn to listen to God is just by showing up. Show up to church, whether it's online or on site. Show up to prayer. Show up to CP8. I want to appeal to all the young people who are watching this today. You want to hear God speak into your life with greater clarity this year? show up to prayer. I say that to myself, okay? Um, yeah, it's an hour out of your week, but remember, if we're not putting in the big rocks first, we will never get them in at all. Another way that we can start to learn to listen to God is by getting connected because God speaks to us through the lives of other people and we need each other to encourage us on in this journey. So don't go at it alone. And the best thing is, is that all these three things are prepared for you. All you have to do is show up. What's another way to start simply? Start by reading the word of God for yourself in your own time. If you find it challenging, start with something easy like a psalm a day or reading through the gospels in the New Testament. Try something different like an online reading plan that you can read with friends or try listening to the Bible. Maybe instead of tuning in to the latest hits first thing in the morning, try listening to the word of God first. And this has been my own uh, personal daily practice as much as I can uh, for more than for about close to five years now. Uh, and at first you might not realize it, but with each daily deposit of God's word in you, you find that when there are storms, that there is this anchor that keeps you steady. Uh, there's something that keeps you afloat, even with all the winds blowing and all the waves that are crashing. It's the word of God inside your spirit that has been building up all this time that will help you build a faith that is not just enduring, but is resilient. 
And uh, another simple and realistic way to listen to God is to keep accountable with your community of faith. You know, if you get discouraged because you don't understand something, ask your CG leader. They are there to help and guide and encourage you through this. They might not always have all the answers to all of life's great questions, but I can guarantee you that they will try their best to find out. And the best part is really that they will pray with you and they will pray for you. Another simple way that I started cultivating uh, a daily habit of listening and always communing with God was simply by talking to God. And I don't mean in, you know, contemplation or like prayer or spiritual warfare. I, and that is all good. That is all important. But I began to just talk to Jesus. I began to just talk to my Lord, uh, like I would talk to my best friend and he is my best friend. You know, I would tell him how my day went. I would tell him if I felt sad or disappointed or hurt. And if I had something to celebrate, I would share that with him. And some of you, you might be thinking, you know, well, doesn't God already know all of that? Well, yes, he does, but he's my best friend and I want to share these things with him. And he wants to hear from me too. He is our good father. He's always listening. He will speak to us and he will do the same as we lean in and talk and share and just commune with him. You know, this year, our prayer is that you will take these one things and make them your priorities. Um, that as a church, we would really grow in these crucial things because these are the things that will keep us grounded, keep us growing and keep us going. Some of you might be thinking, well, this is really basic. Uh, can I say this with all the love in my heart? Let's stay humble. Let's stay hungry because there is always, always more of God. His supply is endless. His supply is limitless. His supply can never be exhausted. It reminds me of how C.S. Lewis described this in uh, his book, Prince Caspian, when little Lucy is reunited with Aslan the lion. And he says to little Lucy, welcome, child. Aslan, says Lucy, you're bigger. That is because you are older, little one, he says. And so Lucy thinks and she says, not because you are. And Aslan says, I am not, but every year you grow, you will find me bigger. May in this blessed year, we all grow into who, what, and where God has called us to be. And in that place of listening and communing with God, may we find him bigger. As we close today, I really believe God is calling us to see him, to hear him, to experience and encounter him in a bigger way in every aspect of our lives. I believe this year he wants to speak to us and lead us through 2021 with such depth and meaning and purpose if only we would just listen. And so right now, wherever you are, I just want to invite you just to close your eyes for a moment and just listen. What might God be depositing into your spirit this morning? Perhaps there is a word or a person or a situation. You might want to quickly write that down and pray through it in the days ahead. Or maybe right in this moment, as you're closing your eyes and just listening, He's speaking that encouragement to you. He's reminding you of His promises in His word. And would you receive that today? Lord, we are just so thankful that you are a God who is not silent, but that you speak to us through your word, through your spirit, and even in simple things, you speak to us. Help us to truly understand the necessity, the importance, the value of listening to you, and help us to choose the good portion that will never be taken away from us. As we set these one things in our lives, Lord, we ask for a fresh desire to hear you in both the small and big things in our lives that we may live out 
all that you have called us to do and that we will bear the fruits you have called us to bear. We thank you for all that you have spoken to us today and teach us, we ask, to be good stewards of your word in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we go today, there's just one final thing that we want to do, and we do this at every service at Skyline. We want to give you an opportunity to respond to Jesus today. Now today, you might not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or maybe you once did, but you know that you've walked away, you've backslidden, you've gone away. Today, I want to encourage you. He's calling you home, calling you to draw you near into his presence once again. And if you feel that tugging right now, you feel that knocking on your heart, I want to say that that's the Holy Spirit. And today, as you open your heart and receive him into your life, he brings us new hope, new life, and a new future. If that is you today, you want to say yes to Jesus, I want to ask you right now, wherever you are, why don't you pray this prayer with me and the words will come up on screen. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross to take away my sins and that he rose from the grave to give me eternal life. Today, I turn away from my old way of living life and I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior, my master and my best friend. Thank you for giving me new life, new hope and a new future in you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Well, you know, if you pray that prayer today, can I just ask if you're uh, among people this morning, will you just tell them, would you just let them know that you prayed that prayer? They would be so thrilled uh, to just welcome you into the family of God. And the other thing that I'd love for you to do is if you can just put in the comments, yes, that you said yes to Jesus today, that would be fantastic. We have people who are looking out who will be able to engage with you. And, uh, you know, the other thing we wanted you to do, is that if you pray that prayer today, uh, some wonderful people from Skyline would love to reach out to you. I would love to pray with you and answer any questions that you might have about this decision you've just made and provide you with some resource to help you walk this journey of uh, knowing God, of loving God, and of listening to Him. Uh, so there'll be a QR code that comes up on screen. If you can scan that, some details will need to be filled, uh, but I promise you somebody will be in touch with you. Well, that's all we have got for this week, everyone. You know, we just continue to let you know that we love you. Uh, we are so grateful for every single one of you. We are just praying that this year is going to be a great year for all of us. It's going to be a blessed year in everything and all that you do. Um, in the meantime, don't forget to, you know, check out all our social media platforms. Subscribe to us so you know when we've got a service coming. But otherwise, take care. God bless you all. And we will see you next week.